10 Top Rated Tourist Attractions in Rome In a city so filled with icons of antiquity and the Christian faith, it's hard to know where to go first. Of course, your own interests will govern your choices, but there are certain sites that are almost obligatory landmarks of Italy and top attractions in the world. Number 1 The Colosseum and the Arch of Constantine The largest structure left to us by Roman antiquity, the Colosseum still provides the model for sports arenas. Present-day football stadium design is clearly based on this oval Roman plan. Beside the Colosseum stands the almost equally familiar Arch of Constantine, a triumphal arch erected by the Senate to honor the Emperor as liberator of the city and bringer of peace, after his victory in the Battle of the Milvian Bridge in 312. Number 2. Vatican City The Vatican is the smallest independent state in the world, with an area of less than half a square kilometer, most of it enclosed by the Vatican walls. Inside are the Vatican Palace and Gardens, St. Peter's Basilica, and St. Peter's Square, an area ruled by the Pope, the supreme head of the Roman Catholic Church. This compact space offers a lot of things to see, between its museums and the Great Basilica itself. Number 3. The Pantheon, the best preserved monument of Roman antiquity, is remarkably intact for its 2,000 years. This is despite the fact that Pope Gregory III removed the gilded bronze roof tiles, and Pope Urban VIII ordered its bronze roof stripped and melted down to cast the canopy over the altar in St. Peter's and Canons for Castel Sant'Angelo. Number 4. Roman Forum. Walking through the Forum, now in the middle of a throbbing modern city, is like stepping back two millennia into the heart of ancient Rome. Although what survives of this center of Roman life and government shows only a small fraction of its original splendor, the standing and fallen columns, its triumphal arches, and the remains of its walls still impress, especially when you consider that for centuries, the history of the Forum was the history of the Roman Empire and of the Western world. Number 5. Trevi Fountain. One of the city's most popular tourist attractions, this 17th-century masterpiece has been immortalized in films until it is almost a required visit. Throwing a coin, not three, into the Trevi Fountain, Fontana di Trevi, is a tradition that is supposed to assure your return to Rome. Rome's largest fountain, Fontana di Trevi is supplied by an aqueduct originally constructed by Agrippa, the great art patron of the 1st century BC, to bring water to his baths.
Number 6. Vittorio Emanuele II Monument. It's ironic that this grandiose monument, considered one of the national symbols of Italy, is rarely admired by Romans, who liken it to a wedding cake or a giant typewriter. Like it or not, the vast neoclassical structure crowns Capitoline Hill, the symbolic center of ancient Rome, overlooking the later city across Piazza Venezia. Number 7. Centro Storico and the Spanish Steps. Take a look at a Rome tourist map, and you'll see one area so filled with things to do that it's hard to read the street names. This is the Centro Storico, the historic center of Rome, with so many art-filled churches, resplendent palaces, and lively squares that you could spend your whole vacation strolling its ancient streets and lanes. Spend some time just to absorb the neighborhood's atmosphere instead of going from one of its must-see sites to the next. Number 8. Santa Maria Maggiore One of Rome's most majestic churches, Santa Maria Maggiore has stood here since the 4th century Pope Liberius had a vision of the Virgin directing him to build a church where snow fell the following day. Although it was August, the snow did fall on the Esquiline Hill the next morning, so here the Great Basilica was built. The Mass has been celebrated here every day since the 5th century. Number 9. Piazza Navona. One of Rome's most characteristic Baroque squares, Piazza Navona still has the outline of the Roman stadium built here by Emperor Domitian. It was still used for festivals and horse races during the Middle Ages and was rebuilt in the Baroque style by Borromina, who also designed the magnificent series of palaces and the Church of Santanis, on its west side. Its facade, Campanile, and dome highlight the way Baroque architecture weaves convex and concave surfaces, gables, windows, columns, and piers into a unified design. Number 10. Piazza del Popolo and Santa Maria del Popolo. Facing one side like mirror images on either side of Via Corso are the twin churches of Santa Maria dei Miracoli and Santa Maria in Montesanto, and on the opposite side of the Grand Piazza are the Augustinian Basilica of Santa Maria del Popolo. Inside, you'll find Pinturicchio frescoes and two tombs by Andrea Sansovino in the choir and two beautiful chapels. Thanks for watching our videos. Like, Share and subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon.